My name is not those people by Julia Dismorph. My name is not those people. I am a loving woman, a mother in pain, giving birth to the future where my babies have the same chance to thrive as anyone. My name is not inadequate. I did not make my husband leave. He chose to and chooses not to pay child support. Truth is though, there isn't a job base for all fathers to support their families. While society turns its head, my children pay the price. My name is not problem in case to be managed. I am a capable human being and citizen, not a client. The social service system can never replace compassion and concern of loving grandparents, aunts, uncles, fathers, cousins, community, all the bonded people who need to be there but are not present to bring family forward to their potential. My name is not lazy, dependent, welfare mother. If you unwaged work of parenting, homemaking, and community building was factored into the gross national product, my work would have untold value. And I wonder why my middle class sister, whose husband supports them to raise their children, are glorified and they don't get called lazy and dependent. My name is not ignorant, dumb, or uneducated. I live with an income of $621 with $169 in food stamps. Rent is $585. That leaves $36 a month to live on. I am such a genius at surviving that I could have balanced the state budget in an hour. Never mind that there is a lack of living wage jobs. Never mind that it's impossible to be the sole emotional, social, and economic support to a family. Never mind that parents are losing their children to gangs, drugs, stealing, prostitution, and social workers, kidnapping, the streets, the predator. Forget about putting money into schools, just build more prisons. My name is not lay down and die quietly. My love is powerful, and my urge to keep my children alive will never stop. All children need homes and people who love them. They need safety and the chance to be the people they were born to be. The wind will stop before I let my children become a statistic. Before you give in to the urge to blame me, the blames that let lets us go blind and unknowing into the isolation that disconnects us, Take another look. Don't go away, for I am not the problem, but the solution. If you read this sign, you'll, it'll help you understand what that poem really meant for Wapaka County and um, the surrounding rural areas. My name is Lori Prawl, and I'm one of the co-founders of Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin, which is located in New London, Wisconsin. Um, we're at 520 North Shano Street. You can't do things differently until you start seeing things differently. Start seeing differently. After we read that program, this kind of all makes sense. If you look at what are the needs in Wapaka County alone, why is the Mission of Hope House, why did it begin? Why did it start? It became incorporated in 2014. In 2015, we became an official nonprofit. Through community impact and the Mission of Hope outreaches that we've had in New London, Wapaka, and Clintonville, needs were exposed. Through those needs, Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin began. If you look at numbers to, from the 2017 annual report from 211, Calls for shelter assistance in 2017 went up by 53% in New London, Wapaka, and the surrounding area. That's alarming. There's a need. In two th the 2016 United Way Alice report, 42% um, of Wisconsin households are at the poverty line. What does that mean? The breakdown of a car. Um, a medical concern. That's putting people in instability and at risk for homelessness. There's a need in Wapaka County in the, the rural area. 
Who are these individuals that are calling Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin now when we're not even open? Who are they? They're rural folks living in Wapaka. They're mainly women. They're married. They have jobs. What's alarming is the increase in child poverty within our area. When we first started this project, it's hard to get a count, um, enumerated count, um, statistically, of homelessness in Wapaka County in the rural areas, or any rural area. So we did our best, and how we did that is go to other nonprofits, go to the food banks, go to Salvation Army, go to the air, other area neighboring shelters. All these numbers back, way back in 2013 when the idea was birthed, um, have, have all gone up. So Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin will be open 24-7. When we first started talking about this, when we had those outreaches, when we talked to individuals that call on the phone, it was hard for them to connect with other organizations because no one was there. Again, they're living in survival mode. They don't want to wait for that answer where they can get help. Mission of Hope House will be open 24-7. You will receive a live person staying here um, and receiving an answer when you call. Um, we will be able to service 21 individuals at Mission of Hope House and the length of stay will be, de will be dependent, dependent um, on individual care plans, on what are their barriers to, reach, to be able to reach self-sufficiency. So every individual is different on the length of stay. As you walk around Mission of Hope House, we reached out to different entities of our community. We reached out to the county and other organizations that deal with mental health and trauma-informed, and we try to implement those things into our facility. Um, this facility um, is a secure place. We have um, the doors and the windows. They're all on security system. We have a metal detector. Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin Incorporated is really a spin-off of Community Impact, which is another nonprofit, um, under the program Mission of Hope. A lot of people think that these two entities are connected, and they are. However, they're two separate nonprofits. Again, Mission of Hope Outreach, how they're different, is Mission of Hope Outreach is a one-day outreach that we've had in New London, Wapaka, and Clintonville. It really is a catalyst for bigger things. So Mission of Hope, the outreach, the exposure of having 700 to 1,000 people flood into downtown New London um, and expose needs. How did that outreach start? It was from our family and all our children, Brooke, Kaylin, Reed, attending Convoy of Hope, which was in the Valley, which is a national organization. Um, attending that, that Convoy of Hope at Fox Valley Tech, at a middle school, in various other locations in the Fox Valley, we saw various um, individuals from our community, way out to Wapaka, attend the outreach. Um, my daughter, Brooke Prawl, who at that time is 2012, she saw her friends attend. And after we in investigated further, where schools have to report to the DPI the number of homeless in their communities, we were surprised by those numbers. But seeing those individuals at the outreach exposed a real need that fellow classmates in their class were at the poverty line or were homeless. So this grassroots effort of Mission of Hope House was really through the exposure of those needs. Again, you can't see things differently. You gotta start looking at them differently. And through that outreach, community members started seeing things differently because needs were exposed. Thus, we have the establishment of Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin Incorporated. I'm Karen Gething. I'm the State Farm Agent in New London, Wisconsin. And how I'm involved is that I have a passion for this. But my passion for the homeless 
didn't start in New London. It really started in Wapaka. And I really want to thank the cable network for Wapaka and the radio station for their involvement in getting this message out because it's such an important message, a message that needs to be shared with numerous people. So let's talk about my passion in Wapaka. Well, my passion for the homeless really started in Wapaka with four-legged creatures. The little furry kinds, dogs, cats, and you name it, guinea pigs for all we know. But in Wapaka, uh, Christine and Bobby Fox, very dear friends of mine, the three of us got together and said, hey, we need to find, we need to create and build a shelter for these homeless animals. And so with the help of the community, the radio station, the cable network, and the whole community in the rural area, the message got out, the money was raised, and we accomplished the goal in three years instead of five. So now, here we are. I'm in New London, migrated over here from Wapaka uh, when an agent had retired unexpectedly. And decided to hang my hat here. And then I was exposed to the Prawl family and the need uh, through the Mission of Hope experience. So through that, my passion grew, grew right here in New London, but for the people that are homeless and the children that are homeless. And so my tie-in is a contributor, a passionate person that really wants this to succeed. And we need the community and the surrounding area, Wapaka. This isn't just about New London, folks. This is about our area, Wapaka, Wapaka County, the rural areas, and all those in great need. So with the hope of everyone getting this message off, um, out and exposed to the general public, Hopefully money and funds will come in and this, this Mission of Hope House will become a reality and a great um, opportunity for people to participate in, either through volunteers, through money, and that will be covered later. Thank you. My name is Karen Duke. Um, I live here in New London with my family. How I got involved with Mission of Hope House of Wisconsin was through a presentation that Lori Prawl did through the United Way, as I also sit on the board with that organization, um, feel as a local banker in the community that that was my way to give back and show support to community organizations happening. Um, I had not been exposed previously to it, but felt um, a great responsibility fiscally and just community to get involved. Um, so I asked if there was any openings. There was at that time for the board for a treasurer. The tr current treasurer was just stepping down. So I said that's a role that I can, can provide um, and got involved and uh, feel that I've added value to the organization in you know, helping us progress with our mission. Um, we're to the point now where we're looking at what are the programs that we want to be able to offer as a homeless shelter in the community. And again, not just for New London, but for the whole Wapaka County. So some of the things that we will provide as a shelter will be just those basic needs, a safe and pleasant environment for them to be in. Um, identify other needs that they have beyond just those basic needs. How can we get them in touch with other people in the community and in the county? Um, provide them meals and nutritional um, needs um, during their stay. Teach them basic nutrition, food preparation practices. Um, we'll have a social worker and train volunteers that will be able to work with our um, residents that are staying here at the at the time to even just things how do they become financially stable themselves um, and hopefully break out of that cycle that caused the problem in the first place um, how do they live beyond the shelter you know we want this to be a pleasant stay while they're here but how do we make them be successful going forward um, and that will be done through mentoring, care planning. Um, how do we return them to society to be successful? Um, we'll do that through advocacy. We'll have social workers, trained volunteers again that'll help them connect up with those um, social needs. You don't necessarily know where to go. You know, if you're just focused on where am I going to stay, you can't think about all the other pieces until you get that basic need met. So, helping them recognize that through referrals, 
information, connecting them with other partners in the community. Um, and a lot of that comes with education. You know, we can't do this ourselves. We plan on having people come in and teach classes, um, bring the information right to them. You know, whether it be job information, financial in information in the form of budgeting, classes, childcare, you know, whatever that need might be. And that will be ever evolving um, as we find out, you know, what are the needs of the people staying here. Um, and then that's twofold, that education piece. We need to also educate the community. Again, I didn't really know anything about, you know, what was happening, that this organization was even, you know, being planned, you know, I don't want to say under my nose, but you don't know what you don't know. Um, so part of that education will be out back out to the public so that they realize that this this need is there. So many people say, I would help, I just didn't know. When our neighbors, individuals in our community come into Mission of Hope House, they are in survival mode. Hope, plans, they can't see that. Mission of Hope House is going to help them paint their dreams, not our dreams, but what are their dreams? They have been living in survival mode, so they haven't even thought of that question. Being in survival mode, are you living? No. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is your future, today is your life, live it. That's our hope for them, to move out of the survival mode, into hope, into community, into being with neighbors. In collaboration with CAP Services, Mission of Hope House is bringing on a poverty simulation. We have brought it to two communities thus far, and we'll be bringing it to Wapaka um, on September 29th at Faith Community Church. We need people attending this. This isn't for people in poverty. These are for business owners. These are for Everyday people, these are for people sitting in their church pews. Again, like Karen Duke, our board of directors just stated, she didn't know what she didn't know. Come understand and learn what's happening in your community. Understand what poverty is, what it looks like in Wapaka and the rural community, and the decisions those individuals have to face on a daily basis to be in that survival mode. We have so many collaborative partners and other nonprofits in our area that we're partnering with. We can't do this alone. We need other nonprofits. We need all cities. We need the county involved. We need neighbors. We need churches. There are volunteer opportunities galore. What is your gifting? What is your passion? How did this building become debt free in less than two and a half years? As you take a tour around Mission of Hope House, we've had volunteers from Wapaka, New London, Clintonville, Manawa, Wyoiga, Fox Valley, sharing their time, sharing their talent. What's your passion? We had an Eagle Scout from Hortonville High School putting garden beds out back. We had the Wapaka Gardeners Club, the Master Gardeners come and just plant vegetables the other day. Is that what your passion is? It's meant to be shared. Please call Mission of Hope House and find out how you can volunteer. All the colors of the rainbow All the voices of the wind Ever dream that reaches out that reaches out to find where love begins Every word of every story Every star and every sky Every corner of creation Lives to testify For as long as I shall live Justify the love, I'll be a witness in the silence says the words are not enough. With every breath I take, we'll give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify the love. From the mountains to the valley, from the rivers. 
community project. Um, when we started working on the mission of Hope House of Wisconsin Incorporated across the road, um, we were wondering how it's going to be self-sustainable. And when that question was posed, many of our people from within our community stepped forward. One of the ideas was a thrift store. Um, after talking to various um, other entities of our community, St. John's, um, some business owners, they gave us some pointers. From then on, we decided to run with this idea. Um, and it's because of Yvonne and Corey Princeton, who are standing next to me and part of the board, um, we are able to open the bridge. The bridge, we take donations. As you go in the store, look around. This is community at its best. Every single item in this store is donated by the community, by businesses and all proceeds are going across the street to get one step closer for Mission of Hope House to open. We are very blessed that this community, with this community, with the new friends we have met, and for this day which is very exciting to both of us. We are standing at Mission of Hope House's The Bridge Thrift Store, which is located directly across the street from Mission of Hope House. The Bridge is, again, a thrift store. We take in all kinds of donations. We've been here a little bit over a year, um, and all proceeds from Mission of Hope House's The Bridge Thrift Store goes across the street um, to help support the various programs that we have. Um, the bridge, along with Mission of Hope House, could not operate without volunteers. I'd like to introduce you to a key volunteer that has been here since the inception of the bridge, and that's Dana. Hi, my name is Dana Caesar. I'm a volunteer at the bridge. I've been here since it started. Um, we welcome all kinds of people to come in and look around and see what we have. We take donations all the time, and we also have people who come in who need help and who can't don't have a house or don't have a place to stay or don't have clothes, they can come in and we donate the clothes to them and we help them out. Um, we are open three days a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday we're open noon to six, Friday 10 to five, and Saturday 10 to two. So come on in. Dana, would you mind sharing, um, what is it like to be a volunteer at the bridge? How has that impacted yourself? It opened my heart. It showed me a lot of things that I didn't have. There was something missing in my life. When I started at the bridge, 
This is it. This is my whole passion. This is my whole life, is this store and across the street. As you can see, volunteers are critical. We have volunteers from the ages of 14 all the way up to 86. Everyone can do their share and to help their neighbor and their community. Again, if you like to volunteer, please call Mission of Hope House.